you're thinking of freedom, you're thinking of life or meaning of life, you don't have no clue because you only have mind who continuously judging and thinking and comparing, but you don't have no other side of that. So because of that reason, very he important, healthy is, is remind yourself not to judge yourself and not to compare. With that, that in the mind, then reflect how I act, how I felt, how I spoke, spoke, how I behaved. Reflect. Like yesterday. Oh, what, what happened to me yesterday that I become so angry? Because I lose my mindfulness. I forgot my mind is too rushing. My mind is too caught into judgment. And I'm too fast react. I didn't really aware what I'm doing. So that's why I'm caught, I went into that. So it's very important to reflect. When you reflect, your meditation is not become like a, like a belief. You know, I really believe that meditation is going to heal me. And that is a really good belief, but it's a problem, a little bit problem with that, is you going somewhere, territory, the non, uh, no, how you say, non, you don't know the territory. You understand? You've never been the territory and you believe the territory is good. So similarly, the meditation is very important to reflect. When you reflect, you're going to have things, you know, to you need to choose one, right? I always like to say, you need to choose one that you really troubles them for you. Can it be judgmental, pride, jealousy, ego clinging, judgment, uh, attachment, stinginess, mm, loneliness, depression. Just pick one of that. What is, how to pick? What is the most often things comes in your hand, in your head? What is the most often thing? You pick that, you be aware. Generally, when the emotion comes, they always comes with the three things. One is so, think, single thoughts. Ping, 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 ping. I don't like that. 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 I'm Apple, uh, Starbucks. I don't like that. I don't like that. I Starbucks. I should do that. You're talking the person, but each between you, you go back the person. You don't like that. That produce the feeling. The feeling produce the reaction, the emotion. So you need to see that how actually your mind creating things that you don't have it, but you create it all. Right? So that's why very important to reflect yourself without judgment, without comparison. With that, you reflect yourself, okay, today I'm going to train. So you train, slowly, slowly train. So now this is very important, okay, the second. Now, now you begin to meditate. You know, what kind of fear usually you have when you go to um, uh, going to look for a job that you really like to do and you have interview, right? You're nervous, right? Because why are you nervous? Because you really want to get the job, right? You really want to get the job and you know you like, that is the thing that you want. And the person is looking at you, you know, and asking questions and you feel very uncomfortable. You're not sure, you're very, you know, you're very nervous. You really want, and you don't know you're going to get or not. When we do meditation, many of us is almost like that, going to interview a job. I know I need to meditate, and I'm not sure I'm going to do well or not. And they had these old stories of great master, the how great the meditation are, right? So you have that whole idea, like a job, you know, like a job thing to receive. Now you in the part of the meditation, you're doing meditation in there, but then you have little concern, little nervous, okay, concern. Nervous expectation. Concern, nervous expectation. Now, how can be you meditate without fear? When you have expectation, when you have concern, when you have a little bit you know, anxious, how you can have good meditation? Just to begin with that, you already fail. Do you see it? Like, for example, I walk very badly. You know, I, I know, walk, I walk very bad. Bad is how you say, unhealthy walk. Right? So exercise, exercise, people told me, 
Remember, you don't walk like that. You need to imagine, you need to think your both feet should be go in and straight. Don't go like that, right? So I try to do that. And I, again, I, I go back to the normal walk, right? So uh, when I did a little bit, I don't do jogging, but I do fast walking. And then my exercise friend says, Rumbuji, go back, think, think, focus, focus, you know. So I try to focus my feet to go in. Similarly, when you start doing meditation, you keep reminding yourself. When you start meditating, don't have expectation. You do well today, it's okay. You didn't do well today, it's okay. Don't keep too much expectation on your meditation. And when, because of no expectation, you don't have no much anxious. Okay, you don't have no much of things. And the, the fear go less. Right? Because when you do meditation, you always have a hope. All right? So that is the one thing. So first, feel. I'm a very fortunate. Okay, I'm very fortunate. Whatever I have, I'm very content. Content, uh, con content. I think I did not say the right way, but content, uh, content, contentment. Okay, content. Then you remind yourself, oh, I'm not going to judge. I'm not going to compare. What is judgment? When you see something, they always produce feelings. Bad feelings, uncomfortable feelings, they produce. And that's why judgment works. And I want to say these things to you guys, you know why? You have an example. You have a neck problem. You know neck problem? You have pain, a lot of pain. You go to see doctor. He did operation in your brain, right? That's not good, right? Doctor need to say, okay, you have neck problem. You find I find the problem in your neck and I do the small pr procedure, and you're going to be okay. That's more effective. Similarly, when you start doing meditation, does not mean because you do meditation means effective. No. Doesn't really work. Yeah, it makes you calm when you meditate, but not effective. Meditation not only just makes you calm, meditation should be effective. Effective means you can see transforming your mind. That's why effective. So I have a pain in the neck, you do the procedure in the neck, right? Not in the head. Right? Similarly, when you start doing the meditation, you always need to learn to reflect. Does, doesn't matter you've done 10 years meditation or 20 years meditation or 10 days meditation that every, hour, every day, 10 hours. I don't care actually. What I really care is a way to see that you are transforming and you, through your reflection, through your behavior, through your, how you react with people, and through how you receiving things to your mind, you can see the changes. Then that means the meditation becomes effective. So I give you one example. I'm a very proud, uh, pride. I was a very pride person, proud person. Okay, my pride is very high. So my teacher said pride is very unhealthy. Okay, and I didn't believe that. Why pride is unhealthy? Pride is very good. Because of my pride, I can say things that I want to say, and I don't care what other people think, right? Now I don't have no pride, I always worry about what people are going to think, right? So I like pride. But the pride always gives me kind of pain in my heart and self-judgment to yourself, and always you judge from other people's opinion, and you judge yourself, and you always react with the people's, how people are giving me, uh, how you say, um, um, how they, uh, uh, how you say in English, uh, talk to you, how they talk, how they behave, how they treat you. You always react with that. 
Why? Because you have pride. That's the whole idea. Because of the pride, you are such a vulnerable. Like somebody gives you, you know, I have issues like that. Somebody comes to me and give me in the you know, restaurant, like that. I'm like saying, you think I'm coming here to get free food? I'm paying for that all. So you should put a little nicer than that, right? <laughs> you, know, you know, really, you're not doing favor to me. Actually, I'm doing favor to you that are coming to this restaurant, right? So this feeling makes you pain. Not happy, make pain. This feeling makes, that doesn't make you right. You feel like you have right to speak, right to act, but that feeling in your heart is not pleasant. It's not calm, it's not pleasant. You need to know that yourself. So I went through like that. So I watched my pride, reduced my pride, judgment, a little. Then, that is really motivate me. Whenever I talk about meditation, I, I tell always to people, please meditate, really can helpful to you. But when you meditate, good to reflect yourself, one single thing that you want to transform first. Can be pride, can be whatever that is, right? So anybody want to say about pride, who have pride that you think you want to reduce or transform a little bit? Okay, anger. Okay. Uh, stinginess, stingy, stinginess. Right. Um, judgmental, I think. <laughs> I think judgmental is most of the time is quite a famous one. Right. So now you know how familiar we are all. You understand? We have very similar, different backgrounds, but similar emotions. But the emotion has a stronger and weaker, depends. So that's why first, I'm very happy what I am. I'm, I'm very happy what I am. I feel very content what I have. All right? After I finish this, that, that feeling is very pleasant. The feeling is feel like you, you, you are in where you are. You, you, you know what I'm saying? You are happy where you are. You feel whole. You feel warm. Then with that, then you say, okay, now I'm not going to judge myself. Now I'm going to reflect that what to improve. Yes, I mistreat people yesterday. Yeah, I'm judging. 80% is relaxed. Because you're not anxious. You're not hoping to get good result. Your mind is already relaxed. Whatever happens, happens. So that really gives you a free. That's why the free I call fearless. You don't have no fear. Right? That is the, the biggest motivation that I have. Every day I don't miss. Why? Because I reflect how transforming I am. One of my teachers told me, Practitioner should be like this. Wherever you go, it's okay. Whatever you are, it's fine. I said, how, how I can be like that? Wherever I go, it's okay. Whatever I am, I'm be happy. How can be like that? But this lately, you know, I'm quite a bit uh, equal mood. You know, uh, in, when I went to Michigan, snow, First day, no snow. After there's snow and things happen and I enjoy, I open the window, I in enjoy the things. And some people are really not so happy about it and I need to cancel the, uh, the program because so much snow, you know, 10 inches and all this stuff. And then I told them, anybody coming, just come to my room in a hotel. So the people came to my room and the room is very packed. Then I taught meditation to them. You know, just you know, a little bit more kind of very neutral uh, feeling, right? Very joyful, very joyful, very happy, it's really nice. So I really think, wow, now meditation is like that. But not just meditation, you see, that beginning you feel the content and feel fortunate, reflect without judgment and without having any expectation when you start doing meditation. All that included, then you go into, go, went to meditation. That helps the meditation in the go in the right direction. Now, somebody says, 
how you know your meditation is affecting you. How you know? Many times they say, makes you calm. The many people say, makes me calm. They say, makes me relax. Any more? Any more than that? No, because you're only aiming, I have stress, I want to meditate. I uptight, I need to meditate. You, go, you don't go beyond that. So you're not really solving the issues. You're just doing some, uh, you know this name, morphine. You ch <laughs> you're just taking morphine. You don't, want to, you don't want to resolve the problem. The morphine problem is this, I tell you. When you keep taking, the problem is the pain doesn't go away after. Now your mind starts learning your meditation techniques so that your, your mind becomes more spoiled. After the same meditation cannot tame sometimes. It's exactly like a morphine. So because of that reason, when you start to go meditation, always reflect. Now I tame anger. Go back a little bit. Oh, hatred. Little bit go back. Oh, dislike. In anger level. When you judgment. Oh, first I have strong judgment. Oh, I have very strong comparison. Oh, I have a very uh, a strong opinion. <laughs> this all judgment. Judgment, comparison, opinion. It's actually part of judgment. Pretty sure you're all thinking that I'm teaching you a Western psychological. I don't, I'm not. I did not study Western psychological. Do you understand? But I study through meditation to learn to reflect. Because the meditation needs to be effective. The effe effective means can be transformed. Transform means you change. You change means you seeing change how you perceive change, how you see the world change, how you behave change, how you see yourself change. That's why meditation is very, very effective. Now when you start doing that, when you start getting that experiences, that kind of improvement, the first thing you want to do is, whoever you really love, first thing you're going to speak is, meditate, really meditate. <laughs> the first thing, you're so enthusiastic, you tell, start telling them meditate. Because you saw something change within yourself that you do not saw so long time. Right? So always go back to the basic. Don't forget. How high you meditate, I don't care. Don't forget the basic. Because the basic is a very important uh, quality. So I feel very happy. I'm very content what I have. I don't want to judge myself. I don't want to compare things with my meditation. But it's very important. I need to reflect my behaviors, my emotion uh, actions. Okay, today I'm coming through all the, uh, how you say, uh, uh, traveling from the Boston all the way down to the um, Atlanta, all this. Many people look at me like, uh, like, oh, hell you, why are you here? <laughs> like, like <that> this? <laughs> because really, the, the funny dress, you know? <laughs> and they talk about me. They say, you know? Then they all look at me, you know? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I, then I carry my bag and try to cool myself, put some perfume. You know, <laughs> relax myself, walk around, act like I'm almost like a you know, movie star or something, you know. <laughs> before I judge, before I feel uncomfortable. The uncomfortable is so strong that eats me. The whole tour makes me uncomfortable. And I think about that. I think about more about that. And that all reduced because of meditation. I know I'm, I'm weak on that. So I meditate, I reflect, I meditate, let go, let, let go, and I, I remind myself, today I'm going to be aware of my mind. Whenever my mind starts going to eat myself through judgment, remember of my meditation, what I learned, what I did this morning. So when I walk, my mind starts looking, judging myself, right away I let go. And that is how you train the real mindfulness. 
Mindfulness means you know exactly to remind yourself when you go through difficulties. You know what is the right action and the wrong action, and you keep reminding. Now you tell me meditation is not effective, but you need to give some time yourself. You know, just like I just give you every day, five minutes, ten minutes, but don't stop thinking about it. Good to think about meditation. Think about a little bit of reflection daily. And you know, when you're doing daily things, don't forget completely. Just keep a little bit in your mind. That really develops a lot. When your mind becomes more, more, more clear, more clear, more clear, to your mind becoming like this, you know, you have a magnifying glass. You have so many small ants going around, but the magnifying glass have a lot of dirt and a lot of greasy things, you know, it's very old, you know. So your mind is imagined like a magnifying glass with the grease and the sand. And you try to see this, your faults like small ants running around everywhere. But you can't see, you see small things, but you don't see well. When you try to learn, reflect, meditate, reflect, meditate, remind yourself not to judge, not to compare, again meditate, keep doing that action. You're actually cleaning that magnifying glass, the grease that is bad, the sand is on there. You're cleaning that. Then you can see very clear. When you see, when you see very clear, your faults can be changed very easily. Many things we do mistakes because we don't see it. We always, everybody wants happiness, isn't it? Huh? Everybody wants happiness. You tell me one person who don't want happiness. They have sometimes depression people, they say, I don't want happiness. They do say that, but they don't mean it, I know. Depressed people, you know? Depressed people. I tell you one story, just one story. One lady came to me, she jumped at me. She said, I'm so sad today, I really want to kill myself. I said, what? You really want to kill? I said, don't do that. It's very bad. He said, I want to kill myself. And I, I'm, like, I'm a little bit shocked. And little bit. Then I say, you really want to kill yourself? Okay, tell me you want a painful way or non-painful way and how you want to do it. Then I asked my monk to give me my knife. Then I said, you show me now your hand. I want to just do a little bit testing. <laughs> she, do, she don't want that. <laughs> then I say, exactly. Always we do reaction like this. You want love, you say, I hate you. I, I want you, huh? I want you to love me, right? But I say, I hate you. You know, do you understand? Always we do like that. I want happiness, but we don't know what to look for. Right? So that's why always, please keep, keep in the mind. First, I feel very fortunate what I am. I feel very content what I have. Secondly, I don't want to judge myself to have bad feelings, but always I want to see what to transform. Number thirdly, I want to meditate, but when I meditate, I don't want to have expectation in meditation, and I don't want to be anxious how my meditation is going to be. When you don't have these things, meditation generally very smooth. Okay? Now after this meditation finish, number four, Always good to bring kind of feeling towards other. It's very important. Don't talk about compassion. Don't talk about things that we, you know, we don't really mean it. Compassion, loving, kindness, bodhicitta. We don't mean it, honestly speaking. All right. I'm telling you, we don't mean it at all. All right. We we do it because of you know they says in the text and teachers spoken and you say okay I'm doing it. All right. But you don't mean it. Right. So how to begin with that? I always tell people, you need to feel other. Just to feel the sense, how the person feels. Imagine you scolding, somebody scolding at you, how you feel. Somebody really, you know, making you nice, how you feel. When you say thank you to the people who are serving you, how are they going to feel? When you say thank you, you need minutes to say thank you. Thank you. Don't say like, thank you. You don't mean it, you're saying it, you know, like a culture, thank you. See, many things that we do is very important to feel other. When you feel other, we don't do mistake a lot. You know, relationship mistakes reduce a lot. Sangha to Sangha, Lama, sister, uh, brother, sister, parents, grandparents, everything, when you feel other, less problem. And I, have, I, I had a problem beginning when I began to practice. 
it's not like that. I don't have no problem. I born in the earth completely clean and no have no negative emotion. It's not like that. When I grew up with my meditation practices, we have some colleagues, Dharma brothers, you can say that I don't like them. Completely I don't like them. But you need to receive teachings from one teacher because no you know, teaching teacher no gonna teach you and the same other group, you know, like you don't like that. They're gonna teach you one group. But I hate them. I hate completely. I say I say when I enlighten, I don't want to be with you, okay? I just want to be separate enlightenment, not with you. All right? So I need to be really sincere because when I do meditation, when I do the practice in particular in the meditation, I don't want to do my way, you see. I want to do the, t not tradition, but I want to do pure one. I want to do the real one. I don't want to do my way. Do you understand? When I do meditation, I always ask my teacher, okay, I did focus my breath, so what is the second one? Okay, I did the second one f uh, holding my breath in my tummy. Okay, and what is the third one? Okay, third one is uh, focus with the Oma Hung letter. Okay, then what is the fourth one? Oh, focus my, with my mind. What is the fifth one? Non-focus. And then what is the sixth one? So I go forward, 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 forward. You see? I don't go say, I'm very happy with why I focus breath. You know, you don't improve. You always stay there. Then one day that feeling goes away, shattered, something happened. Then you lose whole motivation to meditation. Imagine how many friends you have that started meditation and give up meditation. How many? You tell me. Many, many. Why? Why? Think carefully. Why? Because they didn't see, they didn't saw how effective can be, how transformed can be. I did myself a lot of research. I did not do research like scientifically, I know, putting all the things like that. I did not do it like that. I don't have it, you know, in machines. But I know what I have, experience. Daily basis I have experiences. So I, I told you many times, I stopped practice completely for one week. Then I see how it's changing. I carry on my practice regularly. I see what is changing. Okay? I'm a married person. So I tell you one story. I'm a very patient to everything, everybody. Right? To my wife, no. <laughs> when she says something, I said, What is the wrong that I did? Right? So all my friends says, Rumbuchi, you are such a man. That you are, you are such a man that you don't have no manly. You, manly, manly. You lost your man, manhood. Right? You listen to everything what your wife says. You're such a loser. Right? Every man, every my man, male friends, they told me like that. Right? They remind me whenever I meet them. Ha ha, Rabuji, you. Ha ha, you. Because when she comes, I say, oh, sit up there, sit with me. And I always, I always stay like that. They say, so you're such a, such a, they're not being men. Right? So I start reflecting, am I being man? Am I not being man? What is that man? I try to reflect myself. One day she said, Rinpoche, you're such a proud person. You think you really practice every day great perfection, resting the nature state. What nature state? Look at you. You're such a proud person and you always have no uh, patience. Whatever I say, you have no patience with me. With me. And I'm so angry one day. I said, what are you saying? I have the most patience with you. After I went back, I, you know, I like to go in the toilet, you know. I just sit in the toilet <laughs> and, put, and I try to reflect myself, try to see. And she's right. She's right that I don't see. I never saw that how impatient I am with her. And that's why I'm being always very, very truthful to you. You need to be learn to, through your experiences. You need to learn how to reflect yourself. Dharma and meditation is so effective, but you need to be to learn to be effective. Right? For example, I have a very good sniper gun, one of the best sniper gun existent in this earth. But you, when you're shooting the, the target, but you're not looking in this, uh, uh, um, what do you say? That? The scope. You're not looking at the scope. You're just shooting it. You're not going to hit the target. What, how you do it? Why are you doing this? I'm not sure. <laughs> the ego is a problem? No. Attachment is a problem? No, I don't think so. You know, how are you going to be improved? 
I'm being very truthful to you. You all make time to come to here, and I need to make teaching something that is, makes you sense to you. Doesn't sex make sense now, but when you go back, you have time, you reflect yourself. Okay? This is how I, 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 I how you say, I, I develop. And I have jealous issue. You know jealous issue? Jealous with the wife. Jealous with Dharma brother, they doing such a great practice and I don't do. They did reading so many reading books and I don't do. Right? So I have jealous with that Dharma brothers and I have jealous as a wife, you know, or oh, she's like this guy to talk, you know. You know, and she makes she makes you jealous sometimes. She says, you, you're not there when I need to talk, all right? So uh, the, the person is there when I need to talk. So I'm very jealous. Of course, they're going to make you jealous. Yeah? This is the whole idea, right? So I'm jealous, right? To, to her wife is actually quite good because they know exactly the spot that they want to hit. And they hit the spot, you know? Sometimes better than the teacher, actually. And they hit the spot. The teacher says, I always respect, you know? You know what I'm saying? I always say yes. But when my wife says, I say no, you know? Then you see that how your mind affects. Then I sit down and I meditate and practice. Wow, so much improvement. Then I say, wow, Buddha, you great master. My teacher, you great teacher. Without your teacher, you teaching, my life is going to be completely ruined, completely uh, mess, messy. All my emotion, everything developed because of your kindness. It's not you. When you did something meditation well, don't take the credit. Then the fear grows. Do you understand? The key is when you meditation well, you always give the credit to others. Oh, because of people who give me trouble, I can reflect. Because of I learned the teachings, because, because of teacher, because I try to meditate. Oh, because of that, my past karma, I did so many good karmas that I received this teaching, now I'm doing well. My credit is not many. Ah, that experiences becomes a completely free experiences. The experience is expands. You're not going to hijack the experiences. You understand? I try to teach you something that is too useful to your practice, okay? You're not going to find these things in the books, all right? I'm guaranteeing you, you're not going to find like that in the book, all right? I tell you this because it's effective to yourself when you practice, all right? So the first thing is, I always begin like this. I'm very happy what I have, what I am. I'm very content what I have. This makes me very happy, very joyful, very complete. After that, I say, I don't judge, I'm not going to judge myself. I always go into see what to reflect and what to transform, number one. Nowadays, you know what I do? I work with my judgment for two years, right? Nowadays, I'm, my mind becoming so easy to see judgment and to release, to let go of judgment, much easier. Nowadays, what I do is just a thought. Just my mind is distracting, you understand? Continue my thought. So after you done the finish of the, this judgment, it's very rough, you, you do well, you see much better. Then nowadays I train to see how the continuum of thoughts, like string of thoughts, how they connect it to transform different emotions. So now every emotion I try to reduce, okay? Now I'm coming down to my like, continuum of thoughts. So when I'm giving talk to you, I already done at least five, six, seven times, remind myself already when I'm talking to you. I just sit a few times, a few seconds, I already reflecting myself. Don't distract it completely when you give a talk. So now I'm being more focused. Now you, this is how, how you advance. First you have negative emotions, then you slowly, slowly you go into the judgment, then slowly, slowly you go to like continue your thoughts. When that happens, you can see your meditation already developing. Your mind is already transforming. Your person or personality already can change. This is how you, how you get better. You understand? That's why you never let go. When you do it this way, you never let go of meditation. You never do it that. You're always motivated. Right? That's why your friends who done meditation, who are not doing now, go to help them to do that. But tell them, remember them, remind them, not to judge, because we have very easily judgment. So really, really be careful, like a very big intention. You know, intention? Attention, intention, you know what I'm saying? In the German language, they call it Achtung, Achtung. I like, I, like, I like more German because it's really scary, you know? Achtung, Achtung, you know what I'm saying? 
the, the English intention is not so strong enough, you know. Intention, intention, it's not. Aksung, <laughs> aksung. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like that, you remind yourself, really, really, and you go like that, you see, you know. Nowadays, when I teach you guys, I really want to see some changes with you. Because each of you has a value. You understand? You happy, you get better, you know how to be, get better, automatically you want to share slowly by slowly to your loved one. You can see them how they can transform. Imagine your brother or sister or your son or daughter having issues with relationship and they don't know how to handle themselves. And you just hold them hands and say, oh, it's okay, don't worry. Just calm your mind, we just focus now. Right? But I just want to be really be careful to tell you, teach meditation now. Learn meditation now. When you are healthy, when you have no problem, you do now. Don't do meditation when you are having problems, because it's very difficult to teach. Okay? So, meditation. Ah, now the number one is a feeling kind, uh, be happy, this one. Second is reflection, no judgment, and meditation without expectation or the nervousness, or I'm going to do well or not, no, no nervous, no expectation doing meditation. Okay, number, mm, mm-hmm, and number, mm, 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 number four is a feel other. You understand? You need to feel the other, other means all, family, friends, everybody, just feel other. Pinch a little bit yourself and multiply how they feel. How they feel when, I, you, when you don't know respect. How you feel you know respect to you. So when you feel other, compassion comes automatically. Loving kindness comes automatically. But now you say, I wish all sentient beings free from You don't mean it at all. You don't know what is means suffering completely. You don't know what is cause of suffering completely. What do you say? You're just lying to yourself. Being what? Delusion, delusional. I like to call compassion, delusion compassion. Huh? Compassion is completely deluded. Not good. Just feel the other. When I see in the Boston, and at Cambridge, I stayed four days there, and I, me and Joshua, we went down in the night, and after the teaching, I like to drink sometimes Starbucks. I know some of you don't like it, but I like it. Then I drink, don't judge me, and go to down there. I, like, I have a very special, you know, uh, one pump, a small uh, uh, hazelnut, one pump hazelnut latte, small one, okay? Then I take this, you know, and people ask me, why do you like Starbucks? It's a very big multi-billionaire company, not good. I say, I like it because wherever I go, I know exactly what I'm going to get it. It's much easier than going local because I like to go local, but I don't know what coffee I'm going to get it. And I don't know what to order because the name is all so fancy. I don't know what I'm ordering. So that is my uh, simple example. So I went down, Ningje, poor guy, they have homeless, you know, sleeping on the corner. It's very, in a downtown. And he have a very big um, um, tumor in his face. And I think he's a little drunk because he's like, you know, uh, not being aware. So I went down to the, into the uh, um, uh, Starbucks. I bought a very hot uh, sandwich. I make them hot. Then uh, with the money, of course, then I give to her, him. Then I say, Oi, hey, man, I say, Oi. I said, this is a hot sandwich. Ah, he just took it. Then I just, Ningji, I said, Ningji, it's so cold, you know, outside, you know, to give him some hot sandwich. You know, and I imagine myself being lying down and having a big thing and nobody cares me and lying there and then putting some uh, um, uh, pepper and sleeping down and I imagine a little bit and somebody gives me a little bit hot um, 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 sandwich, you know, I'm, I, feel, I feel good, you know. So that's, that's how you do it. Compassion comes because you feel other. When you don't feel other, try to, f- to produce feeling other. Compassion comes automatically, okay? You do mistakes less, right? Your ego is not going to be important. The other is going to be important, right? So this is one I'd like to share with you. 
that is not really connected with the VLS, but I just want to share because I think it's important for as a person, as a relationship with others and like that. And the last one I want to share with you, to really to gain fearless. This is something that I thought about today a lot. Think less, okay? <laughs> Think, I'm not talking normal life. Normal life, you can do whatever you want. I'm talking meditation, yeah? In the meditation time, after that all finish and feel the other, then you don't think too much, but, but you think, what you think, just only one rhythm. That is that. The, I can improve because nature of mine, nature of me, my nature, my core nature, the essence is actually pure. Right? You are a Buddhist, you can say enlightened. Okay? You don't want to be Buddhist, pure. No corrupted by any emotions. Mm, um, why? Who? With nature? Why? I can don't think like that, right? That's why I said don't think too much, right? You just think, I want to improve. So because of that reason, the core nature of my mind is pure. When you start do that, lot of questions that you ask, why I'm here, what is the meaning of life, disappears. Why you ask this question, why I am here, what is the meaning of life, why you ask this, because you feel whole in your heart. You understand? Something is missing in your heart, that's why you're asking this question, right? So when you start going back, I feel very happy in the beginning, I'm very happy what I have what I am, I'm content what I have, then end of the, of the meditation, whole thing that I said, and the nature of my mind, the nature, the core nature of my mind is completely pure. Right? Every day you think like that, think ten, ten times. Okay? Slowly, one week, two weeks later, you're going to see some kind of comfortableness, some kind of dignity grows in your heart. Slowly the dignity grows, dignity grows. when the dignity grows, at the same time, you, you, because you're looking at yourself, reflecting, you, you can see transforming, the dignity, the confidence, the core nature of yourself is pure, and your mind starts transforming. When they combine together, you're really going to gain confidence. When you have the confidence, the meaning of life disappears. Understand? What, what, is, what is the meaning? Disappears. Because you feel other, you always go forward to do something good. And you feel you are very happy with yourself, but at the same time you're content, but at the same time you don't have no fear, you same time you meditate, but you don't have no expectation, but you're always looking at your mind what to transform. It's a, such a holistic, you drink organically, natural stream water, Eat organically, free from GMO and all this uh, uh, pesticides, chemical stuff. You breathing very good air in the morning and meditating yoga, right? And you doing meditation like this holistically. Wow, that is life. You understand? Am I clear to you? Do you understand what words coming from my mouth? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know this this uh, this movie, Rush Hour. When this um, Jackie Chan came the first time, and this uh, the I don't know this actor, this uh, African uh, African. Uh, I love him. How he talks is like my favorite. He speaks with the Jackie Chan. Do you understand what words coming from my mouth? And Jackie Chan is like, like this, you know. This, this is my most friend. When I like, I like, I, I like so much this, 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 what he said. I watch ten times to repeat myself to learn remember, memory of what he speaks. I like so much of his how he speaks. It's such a nice uh, way to talk, you know. So, again, I'm going to repeat. First, I'm very happy 
I'm very happy what I am. I'm very happy what I have. I'm very content what I have. Then you tell yourself, I'm no good to judge when I reflect. Then you reflect how you behave yesterday, what kind of emotion you had. Anger, yes. Jealousy, yes. Attachment, not so much, but some, like you reflect. I had a very tiny bad thoughts, but not so bad, bad emotions, okay. And how this emotion coming to my mind? Beginning like a thought, being aware, then slowly you think about what are you aware, what are you thinking, repeat, 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 then you go after the feelings, all right. So I really want to change, but I don't want to have expectation. I'm willing to change. Then slowly you sit down, then you meditate. Uh, then how you say, no expectation on the meditation, no, uh, how you say, anxious, how you're going to do it, don't worry about it. Do good, do good, don't do good, don't do good, or both are all good. Mm. Then after that, just feel other. How feeling they go through. Imagine uh, somebody treat you nice, how you feel. Somebody don't treat you nice, how you feel. Just feel other. Everybody wants happy, so just feel. Unnecessary fighting, quarreling. Then after that, they say, oh, now core nature of my mind or core nature, nature, the core of myself is pure, it's enlightened. 
and repeat again. Oh, call nature of myself or the my nature of my mind is enlightened. Call nature of my mind or the essence is enlightened or pure. So, like that. Okay, you do steps like that. So, in the meditation, sometimes you feel a little bit uncomfortable meditation, you can do alternate. So, you sit a little bit, focus, then try to feel a little bit all sentient beings or feel others. Then again, focus back to your meditation. Then you say, I feel so fortunate. Then again, go back to me. You can do ordinate like that. When you ordinate like that, your meditation becomes more spicy. You understand? Your meditation can prolong the meditation. The meditation becomes more, um, more alive. Sometimes you go straight forward for a like, long time like this. You feel like a little bit, uh, you need to force yourself to meditate. And you feel sometimes a little bit uh, not so, um, you lose the whole uh, this uh, enjoyment. Uh, that is not so healthy sometimes because you, do, you don't want to do meditate tomorrow. You're going to find a lot of excuses to skip tomorrow. So always you make self to, to, to go forward, to, to maintain the meditation, not to go like that, okay? So this is my basic thing to you today. Right? And honestly, I, I try to make very simple. Right? I want to talk a little bit deeper, but I try to keep simple today. Right? So I think uh, I, uh, I'm giving teaching in, okay, okay, so, yeah. Some of you, you are interested to learn a little deeper. I'm going to teach uh, Alan Sujan House with a small group of students, so I can go a little deeper, because they are mostly the, uh, watching um, my ugly face almost one, two, two weeks one time. So, uh, <laughs> so pretty sure I can go a little deeper. Huh? In the beginning, I cannot go some, you know, most of, I see some of you, you I'm meeting first time, and uh, I cannot go too deep because I don't know the, your practice. But the deep, no deep, honestly speaking, is how effective you do it. This is always is like that. So anybody want to share uh, or ask questions that you want? Yes, Joshua? What? Uh, I don't understand the question. <laughs> yes? What is the re okay? This is very good. Reflect what is your action, okay? What you're doing. Reflect how the the, the your action gives you result. <laughs> uh, I am uh, almost bullseye, but not yet. <laughs> you see that? You see that? You know. Imagine it goes a little bit in my head, but this is. I am safe. I am safe. Uh, the first is try to see how you, what the action you're doing. The second is what is the result of that action. <coughs> the result of action is what? You know, you know? You know, you know? So always look at action, the result. That means that, 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 that because of I not do the homework, the result is too late and too lazy and I should change. So always look too. This is a good question. I have anger. What does anger give me? Uh, like I like to eat you know, food, you know? And U.S. is really bad for me because they give you a very big proportion. So I eat, 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 then it goes like that, then I gain a little weight, then I can eat more, then I can feel more, 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 you know? Nowadays what I do, whenever I eat, I say, eat just meal, you cannot eat, just leave it. So I tell, my, tell myself to not to eat too much, like that. So this is, you know, and I always think, you t eat too much, you can, but your blood pressure goes up. So you want that? I don't want. So always look at the result and the action. 
and that is how you wanting to change. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anybody? Mm -hmm. What is a remorse? remorse like sadness. 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 Uh, right away, you, you feel uh, sadness for you, what you did something wrong, like, like that? Anger, you know okay. When you feel sadness, you right away uh, change the sadness to willing to change. See, for example, like me, I afraid death. So when I, I, when I feel afraid to death, I change the fear to my diligence. You understand? Mm -hmm. That is called transforming. Mm -hmm. Right? Meditation means you transform, yeah? So you have remorse, so you transform the remorse to willing to change, or uh, willing to let go, or willing to, you know, willing to, I want to improve, you know? Always learn to transform. That's, that's the how it's about. Okay, uh, like this, comfortable? No. No. Down, no comfortable. Yes, like uh, very. Uh, <coughs> uh, uneasy. It's like restless. Oh, your mind becomes restless. Um, not mind, but body. body. So you like to sleep? I want to. But you cannot sleep? No. <laughs> Physical pain? Only two choices. One choice, you sit for five minutes, ten minutes, that the pain doesn't go too much, you stay in meditation. A little too much, then you walk a little bit. Then again sit a few minutes, five minutes, ten minutes, again try the meditation. Until you grow, your meditation can grow a certain level. Then you can actually meditate, learning meditation with the pain. Because in the beginning, you cannot penetrate the pain, because pain is already physical. So physical pain is much, much difficult to transform. But when your meditation becomes a little bit, little bit advanced, you can actually train the pain as your practice. But until that, you need to sit a little bit, few minutes, and meditate, then walk a little bit, or stand, stand walk a few steps, and again sit. You try to do that. Only these two choices. Because physical pain is always challenging, because it's already solid for us when we experience. Like emotion, when you have a physically seeing everybody hates you, very difficult to tame that. Right? Because it's already gross. The second is you know you're angry, but you, you know that nobody hates me. It's much easier. But you're not fully angry, but your anger almost coming. Much easier. So you can see the, how the gross is much difficult in the beginning. So no choice. So sit a few minutes, meditate, again sit a few minutes, meditate, and whenever you have pain, you I have pain too, lower back, you know lower back, I have pain. So that's why I need to, I always sit on the full Vajra position, like 40 minutes, 50 minutes, one hour, then I let go a few minutes and again go back, that is helps my back. Uh, without that, uh, I cannot sit too long, like, right away pain. So always do that. Then you have pain, pain you, 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 you develop your meditation with the pain. Because you should know that m meditation does not mean that you always happy and you meditate. Yeah? Meditate means you feel pain, you feel sad, you're angry, you're happy. Any moment you meditate. That's, your meditation always will... Your meditation always be go long, be belong to happiness. When you're sad, you never do it. The meditation doesn't come. There's sometimes when you sit, you don't feel comfortable, keep stay a few minutes more. The, until you cannot unbearable, then you can relax. But little pain is always try to, uh, try to take it. It's a much better for your practice than the not having pain. That is traditional, right? Not, 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 a, not a modern level. Modern level is be comfortable always. <laughs> Traditional always have some pain and easier to be overcome. 
Uh, this is traditional. Yeah. Uh, how to overcome loneliness? Yeah. I tell you, supplication. I told you that yeah. so many times. <laughs> when you meditate, you supplicate all the Buddhas and the Bodhisattvas, thousand Buddhas, million Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, uh, billions. They're all looking at you. All the gurus are set up. They're all looking. They only have one intention. My boy, you're going to do okay. <laughs> I am here. Really, really. They're always like that. And you say, they, you feel all the gurus, they're present, completely present in front of me. I'm happy or not, I think of you. I die, I live, I think of you. Right now I go to hell or I go to up to the uh, Amitabha's land, I think of you. And no matter what, I think of you. And now that is called fearless supplication. Normal supplication, make me happy, okay? Please make me happy. All right. Don't be me set. Now that is called bargaining cheap supplication. <laughs> you always bargain. You understand? That is not the real one. Real one, you make me go to hell, I'm willing to go. When you have that, your heart becomes fearless. <laughs> So Top feeling of love. You have willing to do whatever, isn't it? Tell me. You have the same in love. You say, okay, you know, okay, you know, I love you, but you know. Exactly. The supplication should be like completely from your heart. I feel all the things looking at you. Right? Yeah, yeah. Feel good. Yeah. Uh, please, you can laugh. How to retain the effect of meditation? How to retain? <laughs> you want real answer? <laughs> Supplication to all the enlightened ones. Motivation to benefit all beings to achieve enlightenment. Accumulation, good deed, action to help dharma, practitioner, support the poor people, the basic giving. Accumulation to able to, how you say, uh, accumulation merit without detachment. Right? When you have these three, your meditation maintains uh, very naturally. Many people think maintain to meditation means you keep doing meditation. Yes, you you are right, but not that only. You need accumulation with detachment. You need motivation to benefit all beings to enlightenment. You need supplication. This is very important. Now that is a true answer. Now you don't want to do that, then the best way to do is reflect, you know, what I said before, meditate, don't have too much expectation on the meditation, keep doing every day and try to see the transforming small by small. That is how you like retain, maintain your results. Oh, now that is not, not, you need to remind yourself to be mindful, but you cannot maintain for 24 hours, you cannot. So what you do is you break down beginning ten, one hour. Each one hour, I want to remember. And one hour become half an hour. Half an hour become 15 minutes. 15 minutes become five minutes. So each five minutes you remember. Then five minutes become one minute. That way you, you, you mindful, mindfulness becoming easier and easier. Like when you run, first I want to run one mile. After one month, two mile. Three months, three mile. Five months, ten mile. This is how you imp extend your mindfulness. You do like that, then that is how the all the practitioner did in the past. Okay. Yeah. So this is a little embarrassing. You can. I don't get to talk to many monks who are married every day. I wanted to know if you could explain from a spiritual perspective 
the value because you've mentioned your wife before mm -hmm. from a spiritual perspective the value of intimate or romantic relationships <laughs> Okay, the first thing I want to say is very, uh, uh, very sincere, right? When I was monk, right, and uh, now I'm not a monk, right? When you say monk, is not married, right? Yeah. Right. So when I was monk, I know samsara is bad, but honestly speaking, I don't have that feeling in my heart that samsara is really bad, <laughs> right? Because really, I, I, I'm being honest to you. Like being with a very beautiful girl, holding hand. Because I always watch these Indian movies, you know. They always shows like that. So always I feel like, wow, that is the, the biggest idea that I have, right? So when you get married, you really reveal the relationship is not always happiness. <laughs> you have up, you have down, emotion changes. One day you have love. When you have jealous come, love disappears. So you can see everything's like very, very different. So you don't see any reliable of attachment, the desire that I dreamed, that is not reliable. Then my renunciation really improved. But at the same time, the value of my life and love is because of, uh, because of she loves me and I love her, and I can see how my attachment is grasp, grasp. And because of the grasping, how I can have feelings and all this stuff. So, um, uh, uh, good for renunciation and uh, good for the attachment. Yeah. But then I remember many times I told my wife, I said, when I die, so I don't know who died first, but when I die, don't cry, I said. You cry, you go one kilometer away and cry. <laughs> but don't cry with, in front of me. Because you cry, I have a feeling that, oh, why I did not stay longer. Right. So I always had this regret attachment, and they never let me die well. So you want to cry, go far away and cry, shout, and when you come to front of me, you just be strong. All right. So I told her that, and she told me I should do the same thing. I said, fine, I, I, I do that too. You know? So that is something very unusual way of spiritual talking. All right? My husband and wife telling me not to cry, and I'm die. Oh, that is, that is something. You, know? you should cry, actually, you know? so, like that. <sighs> but then uh, one thing that uh, I practice, uh, uh, respect is very important in a relationship. And uh, then I, can, I saw many good things with me, with her, and I saw many bad things, like bad qualities with me. So it's always I wanting to transform. And but she's, she's a practitioner too. She really practiced. So uh, she can see, she saw her own faults too. So then it's very good to, you know. And now, for example, both of us, we're talking about how to train our children to meditate. So my boy is seven, my girl is five. They already know how to sit, you know, the, the fully thing, and you know, how to meditate, you know. My girl is much better on the meditation. She <laughs> means, but she always wanting to meditate. My boy is more into computer and, you know, games like that, but he's very nice. So we try to give money to the beggar, try to be kind. Some people punch him. I told them to be kind. And my boy is very patient, and I'm very happy for that. Like one day, she's sleep, my daughter sleeping on his lap, and I can see he's having pain, right, in the car. I know he's having pain because I don't know what. But he's holding the, his, her sister's head like that, and he don't want to move because he don't want to wake, him, wake the sister up. So I say, that is good. Because these things is a value, human value. You know, you need to teach them human value before teaching enlightenment, okay? <laughs> so these things, yeah, yeah. I did not answer completely your question, but I give something, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, okay, last question, then I'm going to stop. No, no, so. Hi. So, uh, you spoke about the nature of the mind and say, telling us that it is pure, mm. and that's something important for us to learn how to kind of rest in that, mm. um, and also to have this contentment at the mm -hmm. beginning of the meditation. And I feel like what you're saying is, within that sort of space of contentment, we can allow ourselves um, we don't have to be afraid to look at faults. Because, no, exactly. Because we are already feeling very safe. Exactly. Exactly. Life. Exactly. Now, at some level, our mind is is quite fine. Yes. Quite perfect. 
Yeah. But still, there are problems, and we're going to mm -hmm. take a chance to look at them, and that's where this fearlessness comes from. Mm -hmm. So, but my question is about the fact that we are embodied beings, and we live. Um, we we have perception, you know, doors of perception mm -hmm. that are unique for each person. So some of us have very good eyesight or very mm -hmm. good hearing. Mm -hmm. Some of us have um, sort of deficits, mm -hmm. things that are problems. And what I'm really interested in is the situation of a person who might be very intelligent, but who has a kind of deficit in feeling other people. Mm -hmm. So kind of a deficit in empathy. Mm -hmm. or, uh, I understand. And it is mm -hmm. not because Mm -hmm. They're a bad person. I understand. I understand. Uh, almost maybe part of their physical makeup. Okay. All right. Like a, like a disability. Okay. So that's why why I gave the whole d different range of the practice because some of you lack of that. So I have one student, very intelligent, very truthful, wanting to practice whatever I said, right? But having problem with compassion. He told me, I don't have no compassion to people. Why I need to do something? They always create their own problems. And why I need to have compassion? Makes sense, actually, when you think about it. And she, they, she, he said, I was waiting one day, and I saw one lady and carrying a very big, heavy load bag. And she's almost saying, like, come and help me, you know. She's almost telling him, not telling, but showing, like, face. And he said, he didn't know where to help. I said, you know, you cannot carry that heavy. Why you pack that heavy? It makes sense, actually. When you think about it, it makes sense, you know. You should think. You cannot carry big heavy and why you try to pack big heavy, right? It makes sense on that. But then I told him, compassion is not like that. Now your lack of compassion, you just practice compassion, loving kindness, sympathetic joy, equanimity, this four. I pra let him practice f two years. Just that. No four foundation, no meditation, no supplication, nothing. Just this four for two years. And he went to Africa, uh, Ebola area. Okay, he, he helped people. And now I met him this time, he come back. He said, I said, how is your companion? He said, much better than before. Now I can feel other. Now I told him, okay, now you begin the supplication through Guru Rinpoche. So I told him supplication. After one year later, then I told him, now you start to do the four foundation. <laughs> so why I'm telling this range? Because you need to reflect. That's, that's why I said, you need to reflect. You don't feel other. You do always mistake like that. You need to produce more time on that, that practice. But have you met somebody who seems to have uh, almost uh, like a blind spot? Yes. yes. I think almost everybody has blind spot, but then, then yes, some more, yes, definitely. Some intelligent having, they don't see pride. Some, they have very strong judgment, and I always tell them have judgment, they don't. I have some students who are really advanced meditator, but they cannot change their attitude. The attitude is like a bulldog, you know what I'm saying? Then I say, you're not seeing your teeth. You know, you know, say, but I cannot say too much because I don't want to hurt the feelings. You see, that's why sometimes I need freedom, right? I need freedom for myself that I can speak to you and you don't have no hurts personally, right? So that's why it's very important, you know? Yeah, but that's this, this practice of reflecting <laughs> yes. and seeing our gaps. Gaps and like, most important be difficult. behavior. Always check with the behavior. That's why for me, that's yeah, that's why for me, wife is very important because she tells me directly, right? <laughs> so it's very nice to hear very directly. It's very painful in the beginning. Really, I feel so much pain. Literally, my heart is paining. My literally heart pain. I'm not kidding in the beginning. And now I'm so relaxed. Whenever she falls me, I say, fine, okay, I'm so sorry. It's my fault. Before she's telling me anything, I say, my fault. Then the whole things already disappear before, you know? So always need training, yeah. That's why for me, enlightenment is very important. To benefit for being enlightenment is important because I want to change completely, right? So enlightenment is possible, yes, it's possible. And you can do it, yes, I can do it. Why? Because I saw some changes, right? right? So I can change, why not? Right? So I, I always go forward. That's why Vajrayana practice 
So really good for you when you don't have no confidence. You need supplication to improve your innate nature. That's why we always visualize Guru Rinpoche, our Buddha and Guru Rinpoche supplicate. Oh, the Guru Rinpoche is all the Buddha is in one. All the master is in one with that Guru Rinpoche. Basically every enlightenment okay, is one with the Guru Rinpoche. Then if you feel the presence here and you supplicate, I think of you, please bless me to enlightenment, to benefit all beings. Die, live, happy, sad, success, unsuccess. I think of you. Then you, the white light come from forehead, dissolve here. Red light dissolve here. Blue light dissolve here from the forehead. Then slowly Guru Rinpoche dissolve to you. The Guru Rinpoche in your innate nature completely become one. You never separate it from him. And then, then you meditate. The dignity. Zoom, zoom. Like that. And now you meditate without that. You're alone. I'm, I'm serious, really, seriously. You develop meditation, but your heart is not developed. Your dignity is not developed. You worry about judgment. You worry about people saying things. You're not re really fearless. That's why Vajrayana style of supplication really, really, really beneficial to you. Huh? Okay? I don't want to say these things today, but because of you asked the question, <laughs> I just throw out. Right? <laughs> ตะติตะมะเนทานิกะสังหะกะทิจุยะเรดาหะกะทิจุยะเรดิสุจิละเชกมาทิงเมกะเชกมาเรมหายานะกะชระเชกมาตะหะรังกะเชชุยะเรด